Ja, Sverige har nu följt efter större delen av Europa och fått ett främlingskritiskt parti i riksdagen. Och en av de forskare som följt utvecklingen noga är den holländske statsvetaren Kaas Mudde. Idag är han verksam vid universitet i USA. Och han är inte förvånad över att Sverigedemokraterna kom in i riksdagen, snarare att det dröjt så länge. Och så här sa han när jag pratade med honom tidigare ikväll. Well, what I mean is that in most European countries the radical right came into parliament in the late 80s or during the 90s. And so Sweden is about 10 to 20 years later than most other countries. And I think there are a couple of explanations for that, which are most importantly, immigration came relatively late um, instead of guest workers that came in in France or in Germany. Most of the immigrants are more recent, came in in the 1990s only and were refugees. So in a sense, the issue of, of multiculturalism emerged later in Sweden. Um, and Sweden also has a, a long tradition of a very strong social democratic party, which has been fairly paternalistic, which has taken care of, of the working class much longer than social democratic parties in other countries. Right now in Sweden, the strategy of the main parties is to block out the Swedish Democrats from all political influence. How fruitful is that strategy? Well, it, it is not necessarily very difficult, um, but it's probably not very fruitful. I and mean, what it mostly means is that they focus predominantly at getting the Sweden Democrats out of parliament again. Um, but even if that would work in four years, that doesn't necessarily mean that the problems are solved because the Sweden Democrats are not the problem. The problems are those kind of issues that the voters of the Sweden Democrats perceive as problems. And if you just marginalize the party, often what you do is also marginalize the problems that these parties address. And as a consequence, um, this kind of strategy that focuses too much on just getting the Sweden Democrats out of parliament is in the long run hardly successful. But many fear that addressing these issues will, will only increase xenophobic opinions. Well, again, one of the things that they, they kind of think is that the Sweden Democrats have created xenophobic opinions. But they're actually the result of already existing xenophobic opinions. And they came into parliament because a lot of the voters think that issues relating to immigration or multiculturalism have not been debated. And by not talking about it, these feelings don't go away. So when you talk about it, this might lead to uh, an increase in terms of like the, the xenophobia in the debate and maybe even increase in the short run the success of Sweden Democrats. But at the same time, it might also satisfy uh, quite a lot of people who feel that now their voice isn't heard and who might already settle for a compromise on immigration rather than just the Sweden Democrats solution to it, which is fairly radical. When parties like this enters parliament, would you say that that changed the policy towards a direction more hostile towards in immigration or integration? I think overall the effect has been pretty minimal. Um, you have to see that in the last 20 years or so, virtually every individual country in Europe has tightened its immigration law. And there is not a very strong relationship between the success of radical right parties and the immigration law that came out. Mostly, um, mainstream parties react much more to what other countries do within the European Union than necessarily what a radical right party does. Um, so there is, a, there is a chance that immigration policy will be tightened in Sweden, but there is a fair chance that that would have happened anyway, even if the Sweden Democrats wouldn't come into parliament, for the simple reason that Sweden probably has a little bit more liberal immigration policy than most of its surrounding countries.